الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Continue on in our discussion about dealing with some of the racism that we experience in our communities. And of course, this racism comes from different angles. It comes from uh, from all communities suffer from it, and in one form or another. But unfortunately, because of many reasons, we find an isolation with many of the indigenous communities, meaning reverts uh, in the West have a different experience uh, and are often, because of this, left out in many communities and forced to come together as all, all the immigrant communities come together based on their national national identities mostly. And it's only a na'mah min ni'amillah when you find those communities that are not, um, that are mixed, you know, that you have people from all, uh, all aspects of society or from these very group, very uh, various races and tribes working together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing that in the akramakum and the lahi atqaqum that the 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 most beloved to Allah is those who have the most taqwa so Allah is not concerned in Allah la la in Allah la yandru ila ajsadikum wala ila surikum walakin yandru li qulubikum wa a'malikum kama qala an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that verily Allah doesn't look to your shape and your colors or your shape and your you know your outward appearance but he looks to your deeds and your hearts. So all of these nasus and so many others illustrate that the believer, if we were using the Islamic scale, we would do away with a lot of this, this prejudice and hatred towards one another. Because in fact, it becomes to the level of hatred of people making fun of others because of their race and so forth. And I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about Muslims. This is, this is absolutely unacceptable and sinful and sick. Okay. And how do we deal about, deal with that? Well, since this was coming from the point of someone who is from a uh, indigenous perspective, if you will, as an African-American who asked this question, then I will say that Unfortunately, we are forced, but there's good and bad in that, forced to begin to build communities. That there's, on one hand, we have to show to ourselves that we can build and go forward and lead. And it isn't necessarily of, about proving to others, but it really is about proving to ourselves, having faith and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and then ourselves and our capacity and building the skills, advancing ourselves and step into the plate as men and women who are going forward and contribute to the greater ummah. Because never is it going to be, these efforts gonna be truly, truly successful based on this racism and qawmiyah. And there are so many communities, there's communities that have a lot of wealth they're all educated. And however they got their wealth, some from halal, some from haram, that's not our issue here. But the fact is they, they have a community, have a strong base of support. And they support their community. And sometimes some go outside of their communities, which this is what Islam, Islam makes us one community. But since we have to deal with reality, it's very important that we begin to establish and function like a community. Our youth need to go and study Allah's deen and come back and share the knowledge with the people and help raise the people. And this only comes with ilm, with fiqh, 
والإخلاص لله سبحانه وتعالى. And it comes with also realizing those texts that we already mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us the authority to have racism and hatred towards one another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us the authority to be think that we're superior of one another. But that does not negate concentrating your da'wah efforts on your community, meaning calling people in those indigenous communities, from the non-Muslims especially, to Islam. Call them to Islam, because no one else is going to. Even though it is their duty for making hijra to the land of disbelief, they need to be calling the people too, but they're not doing that. So we have to deal with reality, and we have to call, and we have to act, and we have to support one another. And this will take a lot of trust and overcoming